Hey all, just walking home here from an evening of fun chess. Hope you're doing well. So, I was having an interesting conversation with someone who was very, very committed to the whole uh, Ukraine situation. Uh, very perturbed, very worried, and very keen on Western involvement. Which is, throughout this last year, has been very surprising to me, very strange. So I wanted to get it off my chest and also to ask you your opinions and see what you think those remaining loyal viewers who still think I have something to say. So I'll start you with a history lesson because we all love those. So Ukraine is a patchwork quilt made of a whole bunch of people who are different nationalities and ethnicities. Uh, but who all fall under the umbrella as Ukrainian and hold Ukrainian passports. We know all about the Russian Ukrainians. We live in the Donbass. But there's also... There's also Hungarian Ukrainians, Moldovan Ukrainians, uh, uh, what else? Ukrainian nationalist Ukrainians, Belarusian Ukrainians, lots of Ukrainians. Okay, uh, around about 2008, the government was usurped by a new government, and let me just cross the road without being murdered. And uh, around about 2008, the Russian Ukrainians in the Donbass started getting shelled by the Azov Battalion. It's estimated that 14,000 uh, Russian Ukrainian citizens were murdered by this indiscriminate shelling. These are not soldiers, these are women and children that we didn't care about, that nobody said anything in the West about. Uh, until the Russians stepped up and said, well, we're going to help you make a militia to defend yourselves. Uh, they then got tired of helping uh, secretly and they took over the Crimea. Now you can bitch and moan about that. But the bottom line is, the Crimea has been Russian for centuries before that. It was given away by Stalin, uh, Fedor Peak, uh, who was, wasn't an actual ethnic Russian. He was a Georgian, I believe. Uh, so, really what's happening is, sort of nature's reverting to type there. And people are getting their old lands back. So, uh, 14,000 Russians were murdered by the uh, Azov Battalion. The Azov Battalion founded by a guy called Banderas who was an avowed Nazi during World War II, was responsible for bringing 5,000 Poles into the forest and coming out alone. Still digging up those bodies, by the way. Uh, at the end of the war, he escaped, moved to America, where he became a CIA asset until the Soviets actually had him uh, killed by assassins. So that's the situation there. Uh, when you see the Azov Battalion and the people that we are uh, supporting, you should bear in mind that we are supporting the NA. ZIs. Uh, these guys are, you know, they do the salutes, uh, they have the memorabilia, they're, they're the real deal, and that's a fact. Uh, not before, even before they killed them, ethnic Russians were having uh, lots of problems in the, in the country, uh, from petty indignities, and a lot of, like the kids not being allowed to speak their language in school, to uh, not being able to go and watch Russian subtitled movies. To, uh, whenever you went to a bank machine and you put your uh, you, 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 cho you chose your language option and it said Russian or Ukrainian if you typed Russian it would make you uh, listen to the national anthem of Ukraine as if you were some kind of monster uh, of course the current government has gone on to ban uh, churches, political parties, radio stations and newspapers uh, all in the name of freedom which apparently means a lot to some of us at least it did uh, so that's the situation at the moment. The Russians then invade and we're left with this moment where we have a peace treaty between Ukraine, guaranteed by the West, and Russia. And this is called Minsk II. Minsk II is supposed to uh, stop the spread of war and keep the sides on their respective borders. Now Angela Merkel, who's now retired, admitted as much when she said that there was never any intention to obey the rules of Minsk II, that it was really just a holding exercise to allow them to fill the country with as many weapons as they could to fight Russia. And last year, it came to a head, as you could see, uh, the Ukrainian government said they were actually going to leave the non-proliferation treaty and try to get nuclear weapons for themselves. And they were amassing troops on the border to try to retake the Donbass. Uh, so 14,000 people were dead already. God knows how many would have died before. Bear in mind these weren't troops they were fighting by and large. These were civilians that were dying. Uh, 
and that's the situation. Now the Russians have invaded. Is it a good thing? No, normal people shouldn't really like war. Especially as you get older, you should begin to appreciate that it's a bad idea. But if what I've said doesn't give you, and you know, when you were beforehand, you were a, a committed anti-Soviet. Of course, there's no such thing as the Soviets anymore. If you're anti-Russian, you should try to remember a few things. Uh, in the, the last major European war, which was World War II, uh, the Ukraine wasn't on your side. Ukraine was on the bad guy's side. Uh, Russia was on our side. In fact, three out of every five people who died during World War II were Russian citizens. D-Day didn't win the World War II. Okinawa didn't win World War II. Dead Russians in Stalingrad won World War II. And, uh, and afterwards they paid a, an absolutely terrible price in uh, economic catops and starvations for many, many years. So why now are we attempting to destroy Russia? Why are we giving countless billions in weapons to a country that still does the high Hitler salute? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. But I think that there needs to be a bit more of a nuanced understanding of what's going on. I and mean, while we can feel bad for civilians of all stripes, uh, the Western newspapers, which do nothing but publish hatred and delight at people's death, uh, I think, I mean, if there was, if there's a judgment, those people will pay. Uh, and me personally, I'm not going to be on the side of those people. So I'm going to call for peace as much as I can. And, uh, I'm not supporting war at all, guys. Well, I hope that's something for you to think about. Love your opinions. As, as Churchill said, and that was back when I was a younger man with a lot more testosterone, I thought it was a bit of a wussy statement. He said, better jaw jaw than war war. But much I much prefer the saying that uh, the wars old men start will be uh, finished by their sons. I think I'm paraphrasing it. But uh, just remember, guys, those, those of us who think it's a good idea to go to war. It probably won't be men like me fighting it at 48. It'll be my son in 10 years fighting it. And uh, it's a fight I don't want him to have. Guys, it's getting dark. Have a good night. Like and subscribe if you like and subscribe.